Hello, I'm Judah Sher, an application engineer for Go Engineer. Today, I'm going to design a cover for these tweezers here. To do that, I'm going to be using the Creaform HandyScan Black Elite to scan them and reverse engineer them, and then I'll be using SolidWorks to design the cover. Finally, I'll 3D print the result, and we'll see how it works. So the first step in designing this tweezer cover, of course, is to scan the tweezers. So I've opened up VX elements here that I'll use with my Creaform HandyScan Black Elite. And so far, I've scanned a turntable I have to acquire all these targets, and I've created a clipping plane using those targets so that when I scan, it will ignore the data of the turntable itself, and I'll have less uh, mesh cleanup to do afterwards. So that being said, we'll start the scanning process. And here we go. So right away, I'm seeing that I'm not picking up the tweezers that well, so I'm going to adjust my shutter speed using the buttons on the scanner. And there, that looks a lot better. So now I'll start turning the table. And I want to make sure that I get the tips of the tweezers pretty well, as well as enough of the sides of the tweezers, just so I can get a rough idea of the thickness or width of the tweezers. And that way I know how thick to make the cover. So that looks like I've probably gotten enough data. So I'll stop scanning. And now I will select just the data I want to keep. So that's just the tip of the tweezers here. And then I'll hit the keep only button to get rid of everything else. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's finalize it. And that'll give us our final resolution. And yeah, that looks great. We have a nice clean silhouette of the tweezers and enough scan data to get an idea for the depth. So I'm not going to do any more scanning. Finally, we're going to take that scan and export it into VX model. And we're going to use this for two things. First, we're going to need to align the scan data with the coordinate systems, because right now my origin is way down there. So we're going to zoom back in. And we'll just do that by creating a plane on the top of the tweezers here. So we'll just select the top of the tweezers. Don't need to be super picky. That looks great, though. So we'll hit OK. And then we will just use that single plane to create our alignment. So I'm going to be modeling this in SolidWorks. So SolidWorks is Y up by default. So let me just rotate my view to reflect that. And X is going to be left right. Z is going to be front to back. So I'm going to actually lay this down. So I want this plane to correspond to my XZ plane. So select the plane, tell it to correspond to the XZ plane. All right, there we go. And now I'm just going to manually rotate this like so. Uh, I mean, placement of the origin doesn't matter too much. But I'll just rotate this, maybe try to get that a little straighter. But again, doesn't matter too much. So that's good enough. We'll hit OK. And now that that's all aligned, we simply need to take a silhouette of the mesh from the perspective of that plane. Take a look at the results, and yeah, beautiful. We have all the curves I need, and the tip, and looks great. So we'll hit OK. And now all we need to do is transfer that to SolidWorks. OK, so to transfer that silhouette into SolidWorks, I have an empty SolidWorks part file open. And I will simply expand this, select my one silhouette, and click my Transfer to SolidWorks button. Now that I have the silhouette inside of SolidWorks, I'm going to start designing my cover. So the first step will be just to trace the cover.
gray. Well, that looks good. Finish up by trimming those. And I have a nice profile. Now I did some measuring with the calipers and I decided that a good height for this cover would be about five millimeters. That'll compress the tweezers just a bit and will make for a nice fit. So I'll extrude that silhouette profile, five millimeters, and now I will simply shell it. So get rid of that face. I found a wall thickness of 1.6 millimeters works well for this kind of application. And there we go. So this is the most basic of covers. However, we have a couple problems. Uh, the first one being that there's no way to get the tweezers into that cover. So because of the bend in the tweezers, it, they simply wouldn't fit through this area. So to do that, we're going to need to modify our shell feature and get rid of some extra faces. So I'm going to get rid of those. So now we can fit the tweezers in, but there's nothing sort of keeping them in there. Now my thought for that is to actually have a little arm that comes off the tip here and then sort of presses on the back of the tweezers here and uses sort of a living hinge to apply pressure. So to do that, I'm going to start a new sketch on the top plane. So now that I have just a line, what I can do is I can use that to drive a thin extrude. But before I do, I don't want it to weld to this face. So before I do that, I'm actually going to offset these faces a bit. Beautiful. So now, when I select this sketch, hit extrude, thickness of 1.6. Oh, sorry, that's the direction. For direction, I want to go up to this surface, and then I think we also need to extend it down up to this surface, good. And my thickness is going to be 1.6. There we go. Now, it should merge the results, but it should only merge up there because it's not actually touching down here. Let's take a look. Yeah. So that's exactly what I want. When I put the tweezers in here, this whole part should flex outwards and then snap back, holding the tweezers in place. So that's my design mostly finished. However, now we need to do a little bit of DFAM, Design for Additive Manufacturing. So if I printed it like this, the printer would have to fill all of this internal volume with support material. And while that's not the end of the world, it's also going to cause a little bit of an issue because it will be hard to get out. And I would prefer not to have to get out any supports or even better, be able to not print this with any supports whatsoever. So the easiest way to get rid of supports is of course to get rid of the faces that would need supports and just have uh, some overhangs in a few areas than in where the printer can just safely print over them using bridging. So to do that, I'm going to actually, instead of having this arm come down here, I'm going to have, I'm going to go back and modify my shell operation and not shell out that one face. So that face will still be there. Of course, now I have to go in and edit this operation. So we're going to get rid of that line. But it still welds there. So let's also edit our move face and add that to our offset. Great. So that doesn't weld. Beautiful. And then we're going to just do an extrude cut of all of this. 
So now we have a nice clean profile. Exit sketch. Use that to drive an extrude cut. Again, up to this surface. And there we go. So now all of that face doesn't need to be supported, but also that face isn't really protecting the tweezers either. So we have a nice little collar here for the tweezers to go into. And this top here can safely be printed over because it's supported on both sides, so it'll bridge well. And same thing over here, it's a very narrow area. So we can avoid using any supports and it'll print over that bridge just fine. All right, so here it is, the printed cap. Now here are the tweezers and now for the moment of truth. Goes in, nice and easy, and then, ah, nice little snap very securely on there. Then, yep, pops right off. I'm going to call this a success. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Please visit our website, goengineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Catch you later.